cross entropy. This simple loss function is used in transformers, diffusion models, neural networks, pretty much all ML models you will ever encounter. But what exactly is it? Today, we will first build the basic mathematical background required to understand entropy, then build the intuition behind the idea, and finally end with understanding what cross entropy is and how it works. Let us begin. I love to cook, and the dish I love to cook the most is pizza. On any given day, there is a 75% chance I'll cook a thick crushed pizza and a 25% chance I will cook a thin crushed one. To cook these, I can choose either the oven or the pan. 60% of the time, I just use the oven. The other 40% I cook in the pan. Assuming that they do not interact, it is pretty easy to visualize how both these probabilities will look like together. When I change one probability, the probability of the other does not change. But these probabilities do interact. As many pizza lovers know, thick crushed pizza often tastes better when cooked in a pan. The interacting probability will look something like this. Yikes! What's happening here is when I wish to cook thick crushed pizza, the probability of using a pan increases and decreases for the oven. In essence, the probability of the utensil changes depending on which kind of pizza I'm going to cook. Let's simplify this to make more sense. For now, let's focus on one variable at a time. What kind of pizza am I going to cook? There is a 25% chance I'll cook a thin crushed pizza and 75% chance I'll cook a thick crushed one. Let's assume that when I do cook a thin crushed pizza, I use the pan 25% of the time and the oven 75% of the time. Similarly, for the thick crushed pizza, I use the pan 75% of the time and the oven the other 25%. Now, given that I decided to cook a thin crushed pizza, we can calculate the joint probability by multiplying the probability of me choosing thin crushed pizza and the probability of the utensil being chosen, which comes out as the following. We can do it the other way around as well. If I choose to use the pan or oven, what is the probability of the kind of pizza being cooked, which we can calculate as such. Remember that these conditional probabilities are arbitrary and that I have chosen them on a whim. Mathematically, the joint probability is given as such. The marginal probability is the probability of something occurring. In our example, the chances of me cooking a thick crushed pizza is 75%. So the marginal probability of a thick crushed pizza is 75%. The conditional probability comes from Bayes' theorem. To understand more about it, consider checking out my video on it when it comes out. A simple way to grasp the idea is, given that the variable on the right is true, what are the chances of the left one being true as well? In our example, it was given that I am cooking a thick crushed pizza, what is the probability of me choosing a pan? We set this as 75%. This is all the probability basics you needed to know. Let us proceed with the more complex idea of entropy. To help explain this, let me introduce my sister, who helps me get ingredients for the dishes I cook. For pizza, I need flour, cheese, tomato, and oil. Before cooking, I give my sister the list of ingredients I need, but she is playful. So she tells me to encode my ingredients in code words. Flour gets the code 00, zero cheese gets the code 01, zero 10 one, one zero for tomato, and 11 one one for oil. Now every time she goes, I give her the encode and string, which she breaks down into code words, out of which she makes out the ingredients. But we soon run into a problem. The amount of flour and cheese required for a thick crushed pizza is far more than the oil and tomatoes, and I can give her only a small piece of paper. We would like to encode the frequency of the ingredients as well. Let's say for a delicious thick crushed pizza, I need 50% flour, 25% cheese, and the rest equal parts of tomato and oil. 
if we use our old system, we can represent this as such. 00, 0 means twice the usual amount of flour, 0, 01 means the same amount of cheese, and 10 and 11 mean half the usual amount of tomato and oil. After some time, we ran into another problem. While cooking, I often run out of the most used ingredient quite a bit, so I have to send my sister again to fetch it. To fix this, she recommends that we use variable encoding. For the more frequent ingredients, we use shorter code words so I can fit more of it on a piece of paper. We can visualize this as such. If we calculate the average length, it comes out as 1.75, which is less than the one we started with. This is the most optimal solution one can come to. Let's understand how. We can represent one bit using 0 and 1, two bit using 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, and so on. For our variable encoding, if we choose 0, 1, all the possible combinations of 0, 1 become inaccessible to us. It is pretty easy to understand how. Let us create a sample encoded string with the code words 1, 0, 1, and 0, 1, 0 for apple, banana, and cherry. For the encoded string 0, 1, 1, it is easy for us to split it and get the code words. But for the encoded string 0, 1, 0, 1, there is ambiguity. It can be 0, 1, 0, 1 or 0, 1, 0, 1. How do we resolve this? Due to such problems, there is a limitation to the length and sequence that we can choose. If we go back to our previous example, selecting 0, 1 eliminates a quarter of the sequences. Similarly, if we had chosen only 0, half of the sequences would become inaccessible for us. We can formalize the cost of sequence length as such. Cost is equal to 1 by 2 to the power of L, L being the length of the code word. This can help us find the optimal length and cost of a sequence. As we saw, this cost directly depends on the length of the sequence. We can represent it using a curve as such. Imagine it like this. You have a fixed budget that you must accommodate based on your requirements. So for our words that occur quite often, we can keep a very short code and have a high cost. For words that occur very rarely, we can have a very long word for it and have minimum cost. Now, how do we find the optimum cost? Well, for sequences that occur half the time, we can give half of the budget. For those that occur a quarter of the time, we can give one fourth the budget and so on. The proof of why this is the most optimum solution is in the description box below. If you have liked the video so far, consider subscribing. It helps a lot. Now going back to the original distribution we started with, we can replace the length with the cost by using what we have learned so far. Using the logarithmic property, we can represent this as such. To understand how cost is equal to px, remember how we just talked about when a word occurs 50% of the time, we can give 50% of the budget. So it costs us 50%. The occurrence of a word is nothing but its probability in the distribution given by px. By replacing lx with this equation, we can calculate entropy, entropy the average length so far. In text, you will often find them represented as such, which just uses the property of logarithm as log 1 by a is minus log a. So at its heart, entropy of a distribution is simply the probability of each element being multiplied by the cost of encoding it in some representation. In machine learning, we have real life data, which we represent as a distribution px and our models are trained to create a representation qx, which is like an encoding in our case. When we calculate the cross entropy, we are measuring how close this representation is to the original distribution. 
by minimizing this, we improve our model's performance on real-world data. And now you completely understand cross entropy. Congratulations. Thanks for watching. Consider liking the video if it helped you out.